Thunderdome Boxing Talk. All right, I just want to talk about the uh, Golovkin Monroe fight a little bit more. Uh, I, I rewatched it this morning. Um, I didn't really see anything different, but you know, uh, there was there was some things uh, from last night that I didn't get to put in that video. Um, and I wanted to go a little more detail into some of the things I did. Uh, you know, add add some things, whatever, too. Um, you know, let, let's just go round by round. You know, first, first, first things first. Um, you know, no, let's just go round by round first. It'll be easier that way. Uh, all right, first round. You know. No, I, I need to say one thing though. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, the the defense of Triple G. Um, <clears throat> you know, we heard a lot of people last night. And probably this morning, I haven't looked though. Um, saying Triple G got exposed. If that, I mean, if that's exposed, I don't know what the fuck, uh, you know, a, a beating is, uh, you know, because no one, no one's gonna have hands as fast as Monroe. Um, he didn't really land. He didn't ever hurt um, Triple G. That's for sure. And obviously, he's not a big power puncher. But, you know, I don't care if you, whoever's watching this, is 200 pounds. Uh, I bet you you couldn't last. I, I, I bet my bottom dollar, actually, that you wouldn't last uh, a round. You know, I, I was going to say two, but I'll go around with, with, uh, with a mineral. You know, and that, that's a light puncher, supposedly. You know, and he is. You know, he's not a power puncher, and that's one thing. Um, throughout the fight, you know, First of all, if you think that, you know, last night I said I believed um, Triple G that he was letting Monroe hit him. I still believe that. It's it's true, uh, for sure. But the thing is, I didn't mean it like, you know, he was, um, like, just sitting there saying, crack me. It was the way he was fighting. Uh, you know, he, he he didn't have to fight like that. You know, the way he um, just stand right there, never even put the, the, the guard up. You know, his guard was just like, he'd keep it right like this, take the shots, and he'd slightly move with them a little bit. <coughs> he ate a couple flush ones. Um, you know, if you watch, if you think that that was his best D or something like that, or that's his regular fighting style or regular defense, you have not followed Triple G. And I can understand a lot of people, you know, uh, that, that didn't follow him. You know, even if you're boxing fans, uh, you know, you might have missed, you know, you know, maybe five fights ago or four fights ago you jumped in. And if you jumped in four fights ago, I can really understand it because, you know, what he fought, uh, who, uh, who was it? Gil, um, <laughs> Gil uh, and Rubio and Rubio and those fights both ended very early so you didn't get to see much you know from him in that fight in those fights and then you know he, he never took any punishment in those fights either though that's one thing but the next two uh, fights you know one was Murray and the next one was last night Monroe two light punches all right the thing is if you go all right, let's Murray. You know he beat the dog shit out of Murray, and in that fight he did the exact same thing. Once uh, he knew that this guy couldn't hurt him, he had the guy. You know he had completely broken him, um, and knew that he, you know, this guy can't do anything to me. He de demoralizes guys. You know he'll stand right there and say, G "Give me what, give me your best shot. Let's see what you got." And once nothing happens. It's similar to, you know, Foreman with Ali. How Foreman gave Ali his best shots. Ali said, is that all you got? And, you know, Foreman has said right then and there, he just deflated. You know, deflated. And when you're tired, you've taken some punishment. A lot of punishment, actually. And then that happens. You know, well, what the fuck? You're, you're done, man. You're You're broken. You know, uh, you're just demoralized, you know, frustrated, uh, deflated. Uh, everything's taken out of you. 
And that's what he does. He shows his dominance when he does that. He's saying, you know, I, I can do whatever I want to you, and you can't do anything to me. Uh, that's how I'm saying he lets them. Because if you go back and watch, even just watch the fights that since he has been, you know, world champion, um, and I mean world champion, you know, even to back to where, you know, Martinez wouldn't fight him. Um, <clears throat> and even before he was world champion, he was begging Martinez for the fight. You know, we know... You know, for a fact, shit, what was it, seven, eight fights ago, maybe nine fights ago even, um, Triple G was, you know, trying to make a fight with Martinez, and Lou DiBello would never do it. You know, understandably, nobody knew him at that time, you know, uh, just, you know, just the hardcore, hardcore fans, but the thing is, you know, the, the, there was a lot of people, you know, were people dying to see uh, Martinez fight Murray or something, you know, and no, and most people think Murray beat him, uh, you know, and, you know, come on now, that was right, that was, you know, the Martinez that just had hit that slide, you know, the downslide, and most people think Murray beat him, and look what Triple G did to Murray, you know, beat the dog shit out of him for 11 rounds, I mean... Come on. And Murray's one tough son of a bitch. Big, sturdy dude. But, one, again, you know, once Triple G realized he couldn't be hurt, he, he did it. You know, and just last night, you know, we saw in round one, uh, he he fought uh, close. I mean, go watch, like, the Adama, uh, Adama performance, the Stevens performance. I mean, you know, he's slipping four, five, six punch combos in that Adama fight. I mean, you know, he looked like fucking close to a mixture of Tyson versus Burbick and Mayweather versus Corrales. I'm not saying he looked, you know, burnt like them, but I'm saying a mixture of those two was what he looked like in that Indama fight. I mean, that shit was a, a tremendous, tremendous performance. You know, he was just on point every, everywhere, you know. Uh, super, you know, you think he's um, heavy footed, go watch that fight. You know, he's boom, boom, every, he's just bouncing around everywhere, coming in and tagging this guy with, you know, awkward angled shots. He can throw from so many different angles and there's power on every single one of them. You know, uh, you know, he really fucked Adama up, um, you know, damn. And then, you know, go watch the Curtis Stevens fight. Uh, again, you know, and he outboxed Adama. He didn't just rush, he outboxed him. Then, you know, uh, Stevens, he outboxed Stevens, you know, and that's normally how he fights. You know, he's a, he's a mid-range to close-range, uh, brawler slash boxer. I mean, he is a puncher boxer, um, not a boxer puncher. He's, he's a puncher boxer, but... You know, we know just from his Olympic experience how well he can just box. You know, he can point score with the best of them. You know, with the best of them. Uh, he, he wouldn't have had the record he had. What is it, you know, 345, or 355, or, and 5? I mean, that's fucking insane. And that isn't, you know, that's not fighting and, you know, and don't get nothing wrong with any of this. I'm just saying it's on a different level. It's not winning your, you know states golden gloves or even nationals like like uh monroe won you know three-time national champion you know that's good and all you have a lot of experience there and if you can you know translate that amateur um style and what you've learned there and then also become a pro fighter and be good there that amateur experience helps tremendously and monroe has been able to translate into the pros i i mean i don't see I don't see many guys, um, you know, if if he came in last night, you know, with, you know, a different game plan, of course, but against a any other middleweight, any other middleweight, I think he has a completely, uh, you know, great chance, like a totally good chance at most, maybe 60-40 for someone else. But that's it. Uh, no one is a 70-30 favorite over Monroe. No, no one is. I mean, so, you know... When you say, and you know that, so as soon as you say, all right, well, he's, you know, that's true. You know, the worst case scenario, you know, he, he's a 60-40 against some of these guys. I'm talking any, any of them, the top guys, whatever. You know, he's a, that's the, the lowest underdog he can go, man. Uh, but then against Triple G, it's, 
you know, come on. It's just got the shit beat out of him for six rounds and, you know, quit. I mean, basically got knocked out because he barely beat the count, but he knew what was going to happen if he went on, and he was demoralized. That's why he gave up. That's why he quit. You know, um, he said, I'm done. The ref said, you want to continue? He said, I'm done. I'm done. No more. I can't do this. I'll talk about that, too. Um, which, you know, not nothing. I'll, I'll talk about that. So I don't mean he's sitting there just, you know, throwing his hands down like Nate Campbell, like I referred to, or Mayorga, or something like that, and just saying, you know, give me your best shot. But the way he's fighting him, he's making it a fight and giving him a chance. Just like he said, you know, you giving him chances? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, that's what he was doing. And that's clear, because we have seen throughout his career how he normally fights. But with and he'll never do that with a hard puncher. Like, don't, don't get it twisted. Or any of the top guys. You know, it's like, he did it against Murray. He came in. He did not do that at the beginning of the fight. You know, he came in, fought perfectly. Um, you watch that first round. Uh, that wasn't, you know, his best round. But he was extremely aggressive in that round, you know. So when an offensive fighter like that, to put it this way, Triple G is never uh, not right in front of you. Never. Never not right in front of you. He's dead smack in front of you for three minutes of every round. I mean, come on. You know, that's that's fucking insane. Of course he's going to take some punches first off, but who else is standing in front of this, you know, their opponent for three minutes of every round? Right in front of them. You know, right in their line of fire. But the thing is, he can control range uh, so well. You know, it... it He'll be right next to you, but he has that per he he'll be in your range, but all he has to do is a lean back or this way and you'll miss because he's at that perfect distance to where, you know, he has enough time to see what's coming and can move. Uh or he can just take a little step back and right out of range. You know what I mean? Uh so he's very, very good. Uh I mean he's good not good. He has he is great at controlling distance. Um and he didn't do that for a couple of them rounds, you know. Actually, after after the the second round, he he just felt no need. Um, you know, the the first round, you go watch that first round and a half. That's how he normally fights, but not as aggressive. Like he he just went straight after him. Um, and if you like, I said, go watch you know uh, Adama and, and Stevens. He fights different against hard punchers. He'll never do that against a hard puncher, but. Like, this this guy calls his fights, you know, the drama show. Like, it's a soap opera, like, you know, a show. Um, he's not even looking at these guys as fights. Once he gets a, a, a top-notch opponent, and I agree with Roy Jones, he fights down to his opponent's level. And he's, you know, I, I don't like that um, at all. And I don't think he should play with anybody. You know, like carrying guys, like we get, like we've heard that he, he has done. If that's true, uh, that he should never, ever do that. You know, I, I just don't. I don't see the point in that. I understand you want to give the fans a good show, um, and you really uh, appreciate them. But fuck that, man. You know, don't, 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 don't do that. You know, I don't care. If I mean, obviously you felt his power, so you thought you could take it, but. He can just come off with a, uh, uh, you know, a really, really strong shot, put every ounce of his weight into it, and hit you right on a button, and you're out of there. I don't care if he's a light puncher or not. You know, Monroe will knock you the fuck out if he can hit you with a, a solid punch right on the button, and that can happen when you're playing with someone. I mean, you've heard it yeah, happen countless times. Someone's carrying someone and gets cracked. Uh, you know, we a famous one was Jack Johnson. You know, he ate a, a mean punch. As soon as he got up, knocked dude's teeth out and put him, you know, flat out. Uh, but that that's what will happen. It will eventually happen. Um, but he's never done that with anyone who can punch, uh, punch, punch. You know, like Curtis Stevens or something. And, you know, Monroe has fast hands. But I think Stevens' hands were faster. Um, his reach isn't as long or anything. He's a littler guy. But I think he has, you know, faster hands. And... Go look at how well, uh, you know, Triple G was slipping his combos. I mean, the, there's no doubt in my mind the guy did that 
to put on a good show. Um, could he have been tired? Yeah, he could have been. Um, I don't think he was, though. I've seen him do exactly that before, you know, and throw more punches in the first two rounds and keep fighting at that pace, you know, for for six, seven, you know, rounds. Um, again, just go back. You can see him doing it. I mean, he'll throw, you know, 60, 70 punches in rounds uh, and just break these guys down. And that's what he did. You know, he broke them down, demoralized them. And he, the dude gave up, man. You know, he did He did win the fourth round. After reviewing it, um, Monroe did win that round. Uh, but the best work was done by Triple G. You know, the, the... And last night, I was like, you know, after when I first saw it, I was like, damn, that was a close round. And I gave it to Triple G. And the reason was because of how effective he was compared to, you know, Triple or compared to Monroe, so it was you know I'm trying to balance. Okay, he scored this many points or whatever. You know he scored this many now, uh, and his punches were harder, so that's going to count a tad more, uh, not much more because some guys are just light punchers, and if that was the case, they could never win on points against a hard puncher who's hitting them just as often. So you know it just it's only a tad more, but you know effective aggression that was straight towards uh, Triple G. Ring generalship completely towards Triple G, you know. So if you if you're one of them guys, want to add in every little factor, um, you know, the the only thing Monroe did was you know land more punches uh, and throw more punches, but you know they didn't have an effect. They just didn't, you know. They what gave him like a couple dots under his eye, blacked his eye up, but you know they they weren't effective. Who was fucked up the next round? You know, who, who got, you know, who, I mean, come on. You know, who would you have rather been in that fourth round? But, you know, for real. And then the fifth round. Yeah, Monroe had a decent third round. But, you know, Triple G was just really cracking him, man. I mean, he was hitting him with every shot was fucking vicious. Um, vicious. You know, he, he, he was hurting him constantly. Um, the, the fifth round, you know. Well, after that fourth round at first, you know, uh, Triple G went back to the corner and, you know, Abel Sanchez told him, don't do that. Like, don't do that. He said, don't let him take rounds, you know, and he was like, don't do that. Don't let him take rounds. He knew exactly what he was doing. He said, you can't be playing with this guy. As soon as he went out, cracked him, you know, knocked him silly and then, you know, went, you know, uh, didn't really jump on him, but kept breaking him down. You know, took right back over, clearly won the next round. Uh, and that's when it was, you know, because he, he was still fighting the same way towards the end of the round. And, you know, the middle of the round, there was parts of it. Um, he kept switching, if you watch it. And then uh, that, that sixth round, I mean, Triple G just had him out of there within 40 seconds, you know. And the thing is, Monroe... And this is where it comes to the quitting topic. I heard some people talking about it, so I'm going to address it. You know, when he, uh, he barely beat that count. And I actually think he thought he was going to get counted out, but just step up right as 10, and then he was going to complain. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I think that was, that's what was going to happen. Uh, and once he said the ref, that didn't happen. And, you know, because he stood up like he wanted to go, and then the ref was like, oh, okay. And then he, he was just like, I'm done. He said, I'm done. You know, and he looked just demoralized, man. And, of course, he was a bit, he was, you know, taking a ride down Queer Street. Um, and his legs, I don't know what they were like. I didn't get to see them. I'm sure they were, you know, a little wobbly. Um, you know, because he kept, Monroe was in fucking tremendous shape, first off. Even that first uh, left hook that put him down, you know, immediately in the um, second round, just that one punch getting up from that, I mean, damn, you know, that showed he, the dude's in tremendous shape, and he can take a fucking shot. Uh, and you saw him get up, his legs weren't there. He went back down, got up, his legs weren't there, and he somehow survived that round. Came out in the third round and did good. I mean, he lost the third, but he did good. You know, so, 
man, you know, he, he, he got a ton of respect from me in that, uh, in that aspect. The guy can fight for sure, too. Like I said, man, I don't see many people beating him. Um, and I was trying to tell people this in my, my pre-fight predictions, you know. I was telling people, this guy's good, man, you know. He's not a cherry pick. Um, you know, but... <laughs> And he's not, and Triple G is not ducking anyone. He's not cherry picking. He's just taking the best guys that'll fucking fight him. Uh, you know, we heard that he sent contracts out to multiple people for that fight, and Monroe's the only one that took the fight. Uh, and he was actually getting paid less than what Triple G was offering other people. And, you know, so it, it's not that Triple G's ducking anyone. They're, they're sending contracts out to people, all right? Um, and if any of these guys, like Canelo... Um, oh, wait, let me just stick to this quitting thing real quick first. The I heard people, you know, tearing them a new one for quitting. I understand that, I do. Um, just because, you know... He did survive the last one. You're like, well, you know, he did make it through the, the last, you know, knockdowns and punishment, big punishment. You know, he could probably do it again. But, you know, he was demoralized. He had already taken a lot of punishment. Uh, you know, he, he got, he was probably a little winded, too, from getting hit to the body. Um, because Triple G's accuracy is crazy, too, man. When he wants to tell, he's not even that fast. You know, it's not like the guy has blazing hand speed. Um... If you watch, I think it might be the Adama fight. He gets pissed at one. He gets pissed at one point in time, and lets his hands go. And they are fast as shit when he did that. You know, he was just as fast as Curtis Stevens uh, when he got mad at the, at the one point. It was either Adama or Stevens. I'm not sure. I think it was Adama though. Um, and I, that's when I was like, "Whoa, what's that about?" You know, he 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 had that. You know extra speed. That's not his fastest. I mean, you see different different uh, gears in him all the time. Even in this fight, you know, some punches he'd throw like probably 80% speed. Some would be 60% speed. And they still had effect. You know, like big effect. Um, and when he was cracking them to the body, you know, I think that had a big factor in him uh, quitting. You know, he went down. He got hit hard. Uh, he got up right at the count. I don't think he wanted to continue. He just wanted to get up and have, I was going to keep going thing. Because um, once he got up, and then once the ref said fight, he said, I'm done. So clearly he didn't want to, to beat the count. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, people were tearing him a new one and stuff. And I'm kind of looking at it like, you know, I understand that completely. You know, this is boxing. This ain't MMA. Uh, you know, they have quitting and I understand that, you know, that, and this is a big thing that I talk about, you know, um, okay. You know, these guys, I mean, I have no, you know, I can't really argue w with him, you know, quitting. I mean, the guy had no fucking chance, you know, no chance. He was just going to get hurt worse within the next two and a half minutes. He was going to get hurt really bad. Um, so he quit, but we always, I always, you know, me and a lot of people talk about, the uh, new generation of American fighters. They do, they're not, they do not, they're not as hard, uh, as hardened as the guys from yesteryears. You know, they're just not. The, those guys, you know, from the 80s, 70s, and earlier, they were just forged and under, you know, uh, forged through harder circumstances. Uh, lived in a much rougher time uh, uh, a time when even if you were even a champion your your future wasn't promised to to be nice you know or easy or anything uh you know you you could be stone broke in a year uh, you could be stone broke the next next month honestly uh them guys they they didn't have like that's why they fought so much they needed money uh, and it's different, man. You know, those guys would never quit because they had to win. And if they didn't, they weren't sure they were ever going to get, uh, you know, decent money uh, again or when they would get decent money again. 
you know, they might have to go back to fighting for, you know, a uh, uh, hundred bucks, you know, and people are going to take a lot of it. Uh, and I'm talking about, like, contenders, man, you know, back then. They were some, I mean, you go far enough back, obviously, they'll get much less. But, you know, sometimes, you know, a big fight, a couple, a couple hundred, maybe a thousand, you know, that's real good back then. Um... I'm not talking the mega fights of them years. I'm talking just, you know, big fights between, you know, top top 10, top 20 guys. Um, those guys would never quit, no matter what. They just wouldn't, you know. Um, yeah, you had a couple do it, but it wasn't like it is today, man. I talk about it all the time. These American guys now just, they can quit. You know what I mean? They have a, a good family to go back to that is taken care of. They work. They all have jobs. They have money. They have a nice house. He had ni nice families. I'm not talking just Monroe. I'm talking just American boxers. Uh, they got money in their bank account. You know, they feel just like, like uh, you know, they, they feel like, I don't need to take this punishment. Like Victor Ortiz and shit said. Uh, I got money. I don't need that. I don't need to take that punishment. I got money. Then what the fuck you in this sport for, man? You know, I'm talking about Victor Ortiz, not Monroe. You know, because... And, and, and Victor Ortiz was in a bad spot, too. But fighters have fought with broken jaws forever, you know. Um, and he wasn't fighting no fucking Triple G either. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's different. You're going to see a lot of um, American guys qu quit like that. You know, you are. It's sad, but it's true. You know, they don't have, most of them don't have the work ethic that these guys from other countries have because they're getting forged and hardened under, you know, uh, much, much worse circumstances. You know, much, much worse. Uh, and they've been through hell, and they're not going to go back to that. You know, the hell, this ain't their country. You know, they're not promised a, a, a future. You know, kind of like, and just because they have money now don't mean they will later. Uh, so those guys, they, they, they train harder. They fight harder. You know, they, they won't give up, uh, even if you're busting them up. Like, do you really think, you know, if Lomo was on that canvas or something, uh, do you really, you know, and he was on Queer Street. Do you really think he would ever say, I'm done? Hell no. Hell no. Uh, do you think Gennady would? Hell no. You know, so, I mean, I don't. I don't. Those guys have, you know, had rough lives. And they're extreme competitors. Or they could have never been as successful as they were and are. Um, you know, this isn't your just normal athlete from America, an athletic kid, because most of these American guys, they rely on athleticism more than the craft of, you know, the sweet science. Uh, not all of them I'm saying, the majority, man, you got to be real. Um, you know, they, of course, they know how to box, but it's mostly their athleticism. They don't have much craft. You know, they have a few tricks, and that's it. And, you know, they, they, they'll give up easy, man. They, I mean, not just easy, but compared to past generations, they, they give up fucking easy. Um, I don't care, you know, you've seen guys completely just destroyed, man. I mean, Joe Frazier was blind for, you know, most of his career in one eye. The other eye's completely closed, uh, and this eye's about to be closed, and he's legally blind in it. And he wanted to keep going. You know what I mean? Uh, and he had the, the, a beating of a lifetime. Uh, it was later on his head was like a fucking pumpkin they said you know he kept it in ice for 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 minutes at a time you know pull I mean come on man you know th those are and that's just one one guy that happened all the time man uh, maybe not under that much you know scrutiny and people watching it but it happened all the time man uh, you know the Bayonne bleeder the rocky guy and shit like that man um not even champions, but they will. They ain't giving up, you know. It's 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 different nowadays, man. It really is. It's different, and that's why you know, all of that is why other countries are starting to take over. I believe America still has more champions, um, or more. Yes, yeah, they still have more champions, I believe, uh, than any other. 
you know, part of the country. But when you just take in, if you take in all the, the, the rest of the kind of the world and stuff, they clearly don't have as many as everybody else, but they're, they're there, but, you know, it's clearly, they're losing that gap, you know, big time, big fucking time. And it's just going to get worse, man. China is going to be pumping out fighters, man. Eastern Europe is going to be pumping out fighters. Russia is going to be pumping out fighters. You know, that everywhere. They're just going to start getting, you know, Cuba. They're just start. They're just going to be coming out like crazy, you know. Uh, over the next 10, 15 years, wow. You know, the, the landscape is going to dramatically change. Dramatically. Uh, I see, the, the, you know, the, the other, you know, the rest of the world you know, starting to dominate. America really needs to do something and pick this shit up. Uh, the American amateur program, the American Ol Olympic program, they really need to to step it up and stop relying on these kids' athleticism and teaching them craft. You know, I know a, a, a guy who was in the program, I was talking to him, and he said this is the worst generation of fighters he's ever seen in America. And I said, why? And he said, it's the trainers. You know, they, they, they're, they're more cheerleaders and shit, you know, than uh, trainers. You know, it's not like the old school. They don't spend as much time crafting these guys and teaching them the, the, the little nuances and tricks uh, you can do and, you know, how to move exactly. They just teach them what fucking things to get them to win amateur thing and then you know they're done and then they go to the pros and what are most of our trainers in the pros that are you know i like tony morgan too man i do but the only thing i really heard him say that was like something to help monroe was stay off the ropes duh who the fuck don't know to stay off the ropes you got triple g and i understand um monroe likes to go to the ropes but of course you stay off the ropes against triple g you know, uh, of course, but the guy's cutting the ring off on you like no nobody's business. He's putting you on the ropes. It's not that, you know, you're going to the ropes. What the fuck are you going to do? You know, he cuts you off until you're cornered against the ropes or in a corner. Uh, but, you know, with Tony Morgan, I like Tony. You know, I like him as a, as a shit talker. Um, <laughs> I, li I like him for entertainment value. Uh you know, he had Berto. Berto didn't have much craft. Uh, you know, Monroe has more craft than Berto, but, you know, he could have a lot more. That guy has a lot of talent, man. A lot of talent. If he just had a little more craft, he'd be really fucking good. Really good. Because he has so much, you know, experience on just boxing and just natural athleticism. So he needs, you know, the rest put in there. And all I kept hearing him do was, oh, you're in a fight. You're fucking him up. Oh, crack him, man. Crack him. You're going to take him. You won that round. Yeah, like just cheerleading, man. More just like a, a guy to, to a hype man. You know, more just like a hype man. I, I kept listening, and I'm like, dude, are you ever going to tell him anything? You ever going to tell him to, you know, turn and punch, step back, stay the fuck, you know. I mean, I mean, damn, man. Throw that uppercut with an overhand right. Just something. Tell him something. You know, keep pumping that jab or, you know, don't pump the jab because he's going to counter the shit out of you. Um, you know, punch him and, you know, jump the fuck back and punch him again, you know, uh, and then turn him, you know, try to do something, something instead of just hyping him up. That's all I heard other than stay off the ropes. And I heard a lot of Tony Morgan. And the only thing I heard was stay off the ropes. If And I watched it twice. If you heard him say any other constructive criticism, you know, let me know. Other than that, it was more just a hype man. You know? and, and that's what, you know, that's the, the thing. That's what most do, man. You know, the, the, the cheerleader trainers need to, you know, be assistant trainers. We need more, you know, custom autos ourselves. I mean, you know, G Petronelli's and, I mean, God, you know, e even Freddie Roaches, even though he's mostly offensive, Manny Stewart's. I mean, we just need Eddie Futches. We need Benton. We need more guys like that, man, that really love a fighter and take care of a fighter. They're not just hype men. Uh, you know, we need real teachers, not just guys that hold the mitts, you know.
Anyway, let me know what you thought again uh, about anything I said. You know, uh, Thunderdome boxing talk. Peace.